so it's been a while since I made my last video. Positive thing about that is that I have quite some photos to share, both digital and film from various trips I took the past couple of months. Famous museum in Antwerp. I also show how I struggled a bit during a scouting trip to Leuven. And then I think the, the bulk of the video will be about a road trip I did with the family to the North Sea coast of Denmark to uh, celebrate my 40th birthday. So hope you stick around. First location that we're gonna look at is the Royal Museum of Fine Arts in Antwerp. Beautiful building that had been closed for renovations for several years. And now in 2023, it's finally the time to, uh, to visit again and, uh, and see what the end result was. So uh, yeah, as soon as we stepped into the building, the mood was immediately set very nicely. There was this random dude playing the piano in this grand hall where you uh, enter the building. So very nice way to, uh, to start the visit. So one of my favorite paintings of that day is one from uh, James Ensor. And uh, I remember I spent quite some time in the, in the room where this painting was uh, exhibited. Um, and there was this little bench. And at some point to an elderly couple uh, came to sit and I was immediately drawn to the, the fact that the, the clothes or the colors of the clothing of the woman perfectly um, matched the colors that were available in the painting. So uh, I framed up this composition to draw your eye to the painting, but not just solely focus on the painting itself. So I think it's a, it's a nice composition to, uh, to start with. Also, something that was quite cool, in the same room where this painting was exhibited, there was this small booth um, with a guy sitting there uh, with a big sign saying Radio Bart. Um, so I challenged my girlfriend to have a seat beside him because obviously there was something going on. We quickly learned the concept, which was actually quite cool. And the guy sitting there is a, is a blind guy. The boot is oriented to a certain painting. And the goal is that people sit beside this man and they describe what they're seeing, what they're feeling when they look at a certain painting. So based on descriptions of various people, he can enjoy the, the visual art in a way that is um, available to him. So I really liked uh, that concept. And of course, also I try to um, capture this moment and uh, this is the composition that I, uh, that I came up with. So besides for the, the art, of course, during this, uh, this, this renovation, also the architecture, both outside as well as inside the building is, uh, is quite nice. I took a picture of a, um, it's quite a Instagrammable staircase, but uh, the fact that you have a lot of leading lines, uh, a lot of lights is just uh, really cool. I shot this both on the uh, Mamiya as well as the M. Personally, I prefer the, the digital shots purely because of the fact that the lens is a bit wider, which emphasizes a bit the, the dramatic nature of, uh, of this staircase. Yeah, the next picture um, I took with the um, with the M again, which is probably my favorite of this um, of this outing. You had these very beautiful doorways, and I was able to create a bit of depth by using a bench in the foreground, and just leading your eye into the the picture itself, creating a bit of a, a 3D look. And there was this one guy sitting uh, sitting there, perfectly framed by the doorway and the painting in the background. And uh, I think all the elements together um, really form this image. And um, yeah, I was quite happy with the, uh, with the end result of, uh, of this one. And then final image that I wanna share from this outing, there was this um, hand positioned above and from time to time it started turning. And uh, I basically asked my girlfriend to participate in the scene. And I went for two composition. One was um, looking up in order to draw the viewer's eye to, of course, the, uh, the elements in, uh, in the room. The other one is a bit of a playful composition where I tried to align the people in such a way that it created some visual interest. I particularly like the fact that they seem to be standing um, back to back which in the 3D world, of course, wasn't the case. There were a bit more uh, separation between them. In 2D, of course, it's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a cool look, uh, I think. So uh, yeah, that was basically the first location. So the um, second location is the city of Leuven in Belgium. I went there for a small scouting trip, but I remember it was quite a struggle to, to actually get something. Um, I started off at the uh, Beganhof, which is um, a bit of a historical area within the city. Very nice, quaint little buildings, but for some reason, 
I didn't really feel it. I mean, I took a couple of pictures, but none of them really spoke to me. So I basically started wandering around a bit. Um, one of the cool things that I um, went to was a small local park and there was a big pond full of frogs. It was uh, extremely loud, to be honest, which was uh, quite cool. Um, I only got one shot, a bit of an establishing shot, um, where you see the pond and a, and a small bridge and some people doing a picnic there. Didn't find any other composition, so yeah. Again, the struggle continued in a way. I went to Google Maps, I saw that there was a botanical garden as well. There, I have a couple of pictures that I particularly like, purely visual. So the fact that the, the light was flooding in through the large windows um, created this beautiful atmosphere. I uh, took a couple of pictures from this scene, both on digital as well as one on film. Um, I think I prefer the, the digital ones um, for some reason, but uh, yeah, it's just how the lights falls on the table, um, floods into the scene. I just think it, um, yeah, it truly really worked. It got my creative juices flowing a bit more. So I walked a bit further and um, I went to the, the local church. Again, thinking like, okay, I'm not gonna get these crazy street photography type of things. I went in and challenged myself to, again, start looking for light. Purely looking at what the light is doing within the building and, and try to capture a couple of moody scenes there. So I got a couple of shots with reflections. Sometimes you had uh, these glass windows with a lot of color or that were illuminating the floor, creating, in these, creating these very nice uh, images. And there was also one where um, there was a, like a veil across a, a cross and uh, how the light bounced on that was also particularly nice. And I think by using this very relatively soft lens, especially wide open. It just creates this beautiful dreamy look that, uh, that I particularly liked. Okay, so for the last location, the road trip to Denmark uh, along the North Sea coast of Denmark. To start things off, one of the cool things about Denmark is the fact that at some designated beaches, you can actually drive your car up onto the beach and just find a spot and, uh, and, and chill from there or go for a small walk, everything is possible. So yeah, really cool experience to do it for the first time. One of the things that quickly drew my eye for, uh, for photography was the fact that a lot of people were um, letting up some kites, uh, which provided for a lot of color on the beach and uh, for some, uh, some nice compositions. I, uh, I really liked the shot that I took from, uh, from one that had a kite of uh, Donald Duck, which, uh, which was really cool. Next up was um, we took the ferry to um, a small village called Sunderhe or Sunderho, not really sure how to pronounce it really, on the small island of uh, of Fane. It's really cool. It's uh, it's a very old village. It dates back to the 16th century, if I remember correctly, and you have roughly around 300 houses, very well preserved from the early 19th century. So think nice brickwork. Uh, colorful buildings itself, very nicely well-maintained gardens and just a lot of small streets that you can walk on and um, find your way to the to that small village and uh, basically look for some charms and, um, and get some photos. I think the main constant was the fact that we were always in very close uh, connection with the North Sea and the beautiful dune landscape. I booked an Airbnb, which was this beautiful wooden cabin with a, a green roof that um, perfectly blended into the into the scenery. We were also very fortunate that uh, the weather was, I think almost the entire trip was very nice. So ample opportunities to go out for sunset walks, work with beautiful lights, the activity on the beach and uh, and go for some uh, some nice compositions. At some point yeah, I shot a picture of, of these people on a horse, horseback riding. Together with the light just, just created this very idyllic um, scene. There are a lot of bunkers still in the dunes and there was this one beach where the sea was basically reclaiming part of that territory. So on the beach itself you had the bunkers just scattered there laying around. Uh, at some point you could also see the fact that how they were being pulled out of the dunes due to erosion. Very very cool to photograph. Uh, also a lot of opportunities to, to go for a hike. I remember at some point there were some people uh, flying parachutes jumping off one of the, the higher dunes, just adding this little colorful element that you can work with for photography. These uh, atypical things really, uh, really make uh, a lot of scenes. Some of these sand dunes are just 
very, very large, almost feel like small deserts. And it's within this landscape that you have the most famous landmark of Denmark, the um, lighthouse called the Rubirg Knud de Fir, uh, very famous. And it's just yeah, it's a beautiful little walk from the, from the parking area. We had uh, a lot of stormy clouds, which uh, created some drama. And uh, within this scene, I actually took one of my favorite pictures of the entire trip. It's, um, it's a picture on the Mamiya, uh, where I took a portrait of my son. I basically asked him to uh, to stand together with the uh, the lighthouse. I took some time dialing in my settings and he was getting a bit annoyed. The moment when I uh, pressed the shutter and it creates this beautiful dynamic uh, image, in my opinion, where all the elements just feel quite well and also the compression of the uh, medium format, in my opinion, creates a very, very intriguing and interesting uh, image. Another cool spot that I wanted to share was at the uh, most northern tip of Denmark, where there's actually a point where there are two seas colliding. It's quite a touristy spot and we even took the most touristy way to get there, which was um, taking a, a bus pulled by a tractor. Unfortunately, super touristy, so a lot of people just cramped into, uh, into this one spot. I only got one picture on film where you can see beautifully that how the um, the waves are colliding with each other. Um, I would have liked a more intimate moment with a bit less people to, uh, to actually enjoy it. But yeah, with kids, planning is a bit more difficult. So uh, you work with what you get. At the last Airbnb, it was in the uh, National Park of Thai and we were close to uh, Cold Hawaii, is, uh, is how it's called. So um, I went for um, a sunset walk, which was uh, quite the experience because um, the conditions were very, very windy. But again, yeah, probably in the harshest of conditions, you probably get the most interesting shots as well. So uh, I just put on my coat and tried to protect myself from the elements and, uh, and go out there. First thing that I wanted to have a picture of was one of the, um, one of the boats that were stranded on the beach. There was this one boat with um, the, a lot of flags flapping in the wind. Um, the sand just being blasted over the over the beach. I wanted to capture that, so I wanted to. I had to pre-plan my shots a bit. Also, kneel down, look for some shelter from another boat, and uh, I got this picture on film, which I which I really liked. Then I made my way up on the pier because uh, there were a lot of surfers in the water, even in these harsh conditions. I didn't have a tele lens with me, so I basically framed up a couple of compositions. I like this composition a lot with the uh, the crashing wave together with the guy uh, waiting for the perfect wave. I think that was a that was a nice one. During uh, my uh, walk up on the pier on the left, there was this small swimming area, which was just aesthetically beautiful, especially with the evening light. In this composition, I tried to just bleed in a bit of the the warmth of the sun. To me, it almost feels like a. A screenshot from the from the Dune movies, desolate landscapes, but just aesthetically very very pleasing. And then when I made my way up on the pier, the thing that draw drew most people there was the fact that the the sea was crashing into the pier itself, creating these beautiful forms of uh, of splashing water. And uh, together with the evening light, I was able to capture this image where you have this nice balance between the warm light on the left and the, the cold light on the right. And in the middle, you have this, uh, this beautiful abstract form of the water splashes. This is also a shot that I, uh, that I really, really like. So this was basically it for today. I hope you got something out of it and uh, hope that it brings you some inspiration to go out yourself more and take more pictures. So um, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.